there are at least two kinds of games, finite and infinite. Hmm. A finite game is played for the purpose of winning, an infinite game for the purpose of continuing the play. Mm -hmm. Finite games are those instrumental activities, from sports to politics to wars, in which the participants obey rules, recognize boundaries and announce winners and losers. The infinite game, there is only one, includes any authentic interaction from touching to culture that changes rules, plays with boundaries and exists solely for the purpose of continuing the game. Mm -hmm. Welcome to a video from the Human Play Academy and I am Victor. And what you just heard was um, the back of a book, a very fine book called Finite and Infinite Games. Now, when I first heard this, uh, this idea about finite, oops, had to put the book down, about finite and infinite games, I was really, hmm, I was really taken with the simplicity of this idea, that there's at least two kinds, a finite game, an infinite game, and finite games, they are the games that we play in order to win, whereas infinite games, they are the games we play because we just want to continue the game. And James Cars, who wrote this book, he applies this in a very wide context, like you heard in the, in the beginning there, he says that, for example, war is an example of a finite game, but um, something like table tennis or football could also be examples of a finite game. But we could also play table tennis or football in an infinite way, where we're not really playing against our opponent, we're playing with our opponent just to see what is possible within the boundaries of this game. Maybe we're even changing the boundaries of the game. And for me, having these two ideas and looking at them separately kind of helps me understand why, for example, in conversation, it can be that certain types of conversation are simply not so very enjoyable. Like, I'm guessing most of you have ever or have sometime been in an argument with somebody where essentially they're playing the game of who's right, who can outsmart the other person and say, you know, I know more than you my view of looking at the world is the right one. You know, how enjoyable is that? Even if we win such an argument, it usually comes with some, yeah, some not so good feelings. Like we didn't connect with this person and yeah, we might feel a sense of loneliness or disconnection afterwards. But we might be discussing the same topic that we had the argument about, say for example, how to deal with a pandemic. And then when we're having a conversation in which, you know, it's not about proving who's right, but we're actually just discussing the options. And um, then it could be so enjoyable that we just want to continue the conversation for the sake of you know, for finding out where the conversation leads us. And this then means that the conversation was more of an, well, not an infinite conversation, but that it applies to this category of games called infinite games. Another idea which I found really interesting in the book has to do with uh, what happens when we are surprised. So if we're playing a finite game, say say we're playing table tennis, for example, and you're playing against an opponent and you know that I want to beat this opponent, but all of a sudden your opponent plays an unexpected move. He has a striking backhand, which he was looking at that corner, but he played it to the other corner. You were surprised, you lost the point, and as a result, maybe you lost the game. So, what this uh, example means to illustrate is that if an unexpected thing happens in a scenario where we're playing a game where we want to win, the unexpected things are those things that tend to end the game. Um, the unexpected is what ends the finite game. But if we're playing table tennis with a friend, maybe we're not playing so much to compete, and we're stood there, and it, maybe it's the same situation. Your opponent was stood there, you know, lines up the back end, looks in the other corner, and then place the other, um, <laughs> the corner where you didn't look, then yes, you will have lost the point, but your reaction is going to be very different. So if you were just playing with this friend in order to explore the game, now maybe you learned something as a result of your friend doing that thing. Maybe now you saw that, ah, haha, that was clever. You can do the, the sneaky, uh, sneaky move of looking one way and playing the other way. So now you have that table tennis weapon in your, um, in your arsenal of weapons. Um, and I think this is something that we can apply generally speaking in life. We can look at, hmm, how am I reacting 
to the, what, the unexpected in different situations in my life. Uh, what's that like for me at work? Do I like it when unexpected things happen or do I not like it? Um, if I don't like it, then it's often because uh, it's somehow this, this new thing that comes, it, it breaks my, my view of reality or it, it somehow destroys my possibility for, for winning the game. And I, I invite you all to, to think about uh, the unexpected things that might happen in your day-to-day -day life or yeah, in the bigger picture and see, ah, can you embrace these unexpected things, somehow transform your, the situations that you find yourself in uh, from finite games where the unexpected things, they just kill the game and making them into infinite games where the unexpected thing is actually what keeps the game alive. Um, there's a final idea I want to share with you from the book, and this has to do with what it means to be playful. So, because I, I work with, with play, and I like play, I like being playful. But when I talk about play and playfulness with people, often people have this idea that, oh, play? That's so silly. Let's not, let's not do that. Play is for adults. Well, play is for kids, I mean. <laughs> Some people say play is for adults, and I say that too. Um, but there's this interesting definition of playfulness from the book, which I find very, very appealing. And that playfulness is different from seriousness. And if we start with seriousness, then seriousness is not so much about being, uh, having a serious face or something. It's about being focused on a particular goal. So in other ways, being serious is very closely related to the finite game where we're engaging with other people in order to win. And this is very different from how we behave when we're engaging with somebody in a playful way. Because when we're engaging with somebody in a playful way, meaning we're somehow involved in an infinite game, then we are we're open to all the possibilities that might come. So if I'm if I go up to a stranger and I ask them, um, why are you sitting on that bench? That might be a, a starting point for, for an infinite conversation where I don't know what this person will say, and uh, then we could just take it from there. But if I woke up to this, that same stranger and said, oh, how do you do? Then oh, maybe people will think that I, I'm a strange person anyway for talking to strangers. But if I say it's such an opening, it's more likely that I will get a response that says, oh, I'm fine, um, how are you? And why are you talking to me? Um, <laughs> so maybe not the best example to illustrate this point. Um, but I just want to... I want to bring this, um, this idea to you that playfulness isn't so much about having a particular character or being in a particular mood, it's about a certain openness that I interact with you knowing that I don't know what you will do or say and that I'm okay with this, I'm even enjoying it because the unexpected things that you say to me or do to me is the things that will broaden my perspective of, of reality and of who you are and who I am. And through that, we will both grow. And I think that's why play is so great, because it's, if we have, can have this openness, if we can engage in infinite games, if we can be open and, and play with each other, then we have the possibility of learning from each other. And this is different from when we're engaging with each other in a serious way. Because in, in the serious way, then I have a, a very limited picture of reality, and I know that, okay, this is what I want. And this is what I expect. This is what I'm pursuing. I will either succeed or I will fail. Yeah. Those are just a few ideas from this wonderful book. And I just want to mention also in passing that uh, James P. Carr, who wrote the book, he passed away a few days ago. So sending him some, um, some good thoughts and honouring his memory. Yeah. And on that <laughs> gloomy note, um, if you like this video, please leave a comment below or uh, let us know what you liked about it or if you find some interesting finite and infinite game examples from your life or if you find some, some interesting applications that I didn't mention in the video. Let us know and I look forward to seeing you perhaps in another video, perhaps in real life. Who knows? Take care.